Uh, hi, I'm Arthur. And today is going to be a bit of a tough video. As I'm writing this, I have done all my note taking and it is extended pretty far out from where I thought I would be. I play the tabletop game. I think it's fun and neat and cool, but you don't ever put together how many weapons in this game there actually are. So, Space Marines, love them, hate them. You've got to admit that they at least have their work cut out for them as the major threats in the universe consist of everything that isn't human and some things that are human. So with that varied of a target audience, they need to have a pretty varied weapon range, right? Because they have a lot of weapons, I did not even consider. With all of these videos involving various topics I am trying to explain, there isn't as many variants as there are weapons. Like Dreadnoughts, there were like five, maybe seven. I might have missed a few, but you catch my point. What I'm getting at is there are 30 plus weapons that a standard space marine can wield, and I'm gonna try and go through all of them. There are a few rules here. One, I'm not covering every minute pattern of weapon. I could make an entire video about the different patterns of fucking bolter and bolt gun, but I'm not going to do that because that's silly. If it's distinct enough, I'll mention it. Secondly, same deal goes for things that in the lore are the same thing but slightly modified. Good example as to what I mean, an assault bolter that an Inceptor has is actually just a modified heavy bolter that is used for aerial combat, so I'm just gonna lump that under heavy bolter. Same thing with like a plasma incinerator, it's just a souped up version of a plasma gun. Last rule is I'm not covering dreadnought weapons and vehicle weapons, or more or less any Horus Heresy era weapons, as we would be here all fucking day. And I know if I did that, I would get a comment from someone saying, oh, you missed the Eschaton Power Claw that that one miniature had from the Thromus Crusade, to which I have to add yet another thing to the list of shit I got wrong. If a space marine can wield it, I'll probably mention it. So to start, let's go with the standard and assault weapons of the Space Marines. Firstly, the bolt gun. Coming in as many flavors as you'd like, it is the workhorse weapon of the standard Astartes. Coming in machine gun and pistol variants, it fires a 75 caliber rocket propelled diamond tipped fuck you that explodes like half a second after impact, just to make the mush inside a person more mushy after being hit with it. It has a fucking ludicrous amount of variance in all forms, but if you know what one looks like, you kinda know what every other one's going to look like, right? Then, you do have a pattern of bolter that is significantly modified enough to occupy a different niche, called the Storm Bolter. The Storm Bolter is actually a devolved version of an old-fashioned combi bolter, which is just two bolt guns duct taped together. So imagine a bolter, but more. It fires twice as fast and has an ammo drum instead of the standard magazine that you see on the traditional bolt gun. So don't be on the firing end of this thing because you will probably just end up being slop on the ground after. Next one is weird, but it is good to mention, so in this universe there are certain people, literal sociopaths, that like to have underslung weapons not on their own guns, but on their melee weapons. So with the power fist, used to break down fortifications and vehicles, there are some maniacs that think that's not enough power. So, you have this class of weapon known as a bolt storm gauntlet, which is essentially a high yield bolt gun underslung to a power fist. Oh, uh, there's also a modified version of this called a flame storm gauntlet. Same shit, just flamethrower. Uh, shouts out to Alexis Pollux, the dude who had an underslung fucking melt -a gun on his power fist and a storm shield. Now, I just mentioned flamers and meltaguns, so to elaborate on that, as well as other assault weapons, you have the meltagun, which is a pretty easy to understand weapon if you don't think about it at all. Essentially, it creates a small fusion reaction which melts the living shit out of anything in a straight line. Also, apparently it's weirdly quiet, a stealth unalivenator, if you will. 
that fires radioactive magma at a short range. God, 40k is fucking silly. Then you have the flamer, which is, as you would probably assume, a shorter way to describe a flamethrower, which is what it is. Essentially, they decided the Geneva Convention was more of a target goal list rather than an actual set of rules to be followed, because this thing fires super napalm known as Prometheum, which apparently burns forever? Cool. I guess? Next, you have grav weapons, which, oddly enough, are meant initially to be non-lethal. They are a weapon that increases the gravity around an individual, making it hard for them to move, making them easy to capture. Which is a cool idea in concept, until you realize the mainstay part of this weapon is amplifying the effects so much that the thing you point at has their fucking bones turn into jelly. It's good on bigger things that are heavy, but also lack structural density. Because if it's made out of a very dense metal, it can resist the effect just by virtue of being strong enough to not bend or break. But if it were a fleshy, big thing, God help them. Which makes no fucking sense because the weapon itself has anti-vehicle, but not anti-monster, but we'll, we're just gonna fucking... Okay, on to the next one. Plasma gun! which is basically occupying the middle step between the melt gun and a flamer. It's anti-heavy infantry rather than anti-tank or anti-infantry. It just fires a ball of superheated plasma due to the spiraling plasma keto matic coils that are on it. And if you fire it too much, it has a chance of overheating those coils and exploding. Unless you're the Tau. Or the Leagues of Votan. Before I move on to the next category, I just want to mention the last four guns I discussed. You know, Melta, Flamer, and Grav weapons. They all come in pistol variant, for the especially cracked, concealed carry enthusiasts. Also, there is combi weapons. Remember when I mentioned the combi bolter earlier, where it is a bolt gun duct taped to another bolt gun? Yeah, there are still variants of that now to discuss. Where, instead of duct taping another bolt gun to a bolt gun, you duct tape the weapons I mentioned to a bolt gun, so you can have a, things like a combi plasma gun or a combi melt a gun, where it has a bolt gun on one side and a whatever on the other side. It's just in case you're dealing with infantry and also need a bit of anti-tank, just for funsies, you know. Next up, shotgun, the Astartes variant. It's supposed to be like a regular shotgun, but more stopping power and supposedly strong enough to kill another space marine. But in the game, they've had the same stats as the Imperial Guard shotgun for forever now. Still looks cool though. Though they did get an update recently for neophytes with the Black Templar Crusader squad, so now they're one pip of strength stronger, technically. But I guess it's still kind of shit though. Then you have the Astarte sniper rifle and all its variants. Because there are specifically different sniper rifles for different units. Eradicators carry a very heavy version of the traditional sniper rifle with different ammunition types to deal with different threats, but the standard Space Marine sniper rifle goes to more or less just the scouts, which are no longer purchasable for now. You have grenade launchers, usually made to launch the standard crack or frag grenades, which Frag grenades are meant to kill people, crack grenades are meant to kill everything else. Grenade launchers come in many different variants, but they all more or less serve the same purpose. Though not in common practice, phosphex weaponry still exists, and it's basically just super white phosphorus. It burns without fuel, oxygen, or like, anything. Which scientifically makes no sense unless it's magic, which I'm assuming it's just magic. Whatever. On the topic of war crimes, we have the less commonly used Volkite weapon, which is, like, super fucking hard to define what they do. Essentially, imagine a weapon that turns your body into a microwave that cooks your organs from the inside out, and then you explode. Yeah, that's what a Volkite weapon does. There are, like, five different versions, varying based on weapon size and microwave kill you beam output, ranging between the Volkite Serpenta, which is the pistol, all the way up to like a Volkite Culverin, which is a dreadnought weapon. But 
they all basically just do the same thing. So that's about it for the standard arsenal as well as the assault one. I guess we should move on to the next category, the melee weapons. Space Marines do in fact like stabbing stuff and bludgeoning stuff and just killing things. So what do they have to accomplish this? First things first, the standard combat weapon, which could be fucking anything. Space Marines carry a litany of non-specialized weapons to accent their attacks if all goes poorly. So combat knives, boarding axes, gladiuses that are attached to their shin guards, just standard stuff sized up for Space Marine level. Usually it's described in lore that a Space Marine combat knife used just for basic self-defense is like the size of a short sword for a normal human. Next, we have the chain weapons. Most commonly found in sword form, the chain sword is a chainsaw weapon that is pretty standard for assaults with Space Marines that turn on and rotate fast enough to cut through most meat and some armor. It does have issues getting through thicker armor though. It's more of a terror tactic anti-infantry weapon. If that's not enough for you, check out its big boy cousin, the Eviscerator. Basically a great sword version that is significantly more powerful and cuts through armor a lot easier too. Now we get to the most well known of the Space Marine melee arsenal, the power weapons. You got the sword, the lance, the axe, the maul, the fist, all do roughly the same thing. You turn on the displacer field, which makes it so that anything that touches the weapon is repelled away from the blade or exploded off of a blunt weapon. Meaning, whenever a power sword cuts, it can pretty much split anything on a molecular level just because of weird vibrational sciences. And for things like a power fist and a maul, it just causes you to explode like you got punched by the mushroom parents from Dark Souls, which is kind of neat. <laughs> Alongside that, you have the Lightning Claws, which are essentially a power weapon, but instead of one powered blade, it's like five smaller ones, and usually people have two of them at a time. It cuts a lot easier due to the shorter blades, but it can be a bit harder to pierce thick armor and do any sizable amount of major damage. Now we have a category of weapons I refer to as bullshit magic, because that's what force weapons are. They are bullshit magic weapons that only psychers can use. Basically for space marines, only librarians of some sort can use them, but essentially they operate under the same principle as a power weapon, but instead of having a generator or electrical charge, they are powered by the psychic might of the librarian. How does this make a difference? I don't know. It's just magic. They say, oh, the psyker can will the blade further. Okay, cool. Does it make it split atoms more? It's stupid, but kind of cool. The psychic weapons thing is kind of fun and they come in three flavors for the majority of space marines, which is axe, stave, and sword. They all look pretty cool too. Then you have a weird weapon on the opposite end of the spectrum called a Crozius Arcanum, essentially a rod of office to show you are a chaplain. This weapon is essentially a power maul. Most of the times, I know that there is a special Crozius that the Minotaur's chapter Ecclesiarch has that is a thunder hammer. The Crozius itself has religious properties to it. Functionally, it's the same thing as a power mall, but if you're demonic or a heretic, it stings a bit more, I guess. Last, but certainly not least, discharging twice the amount of energy as the power fist upon impact, creating shockwaves that can destroy tank hulls, used by almost exclusively heavy infantry, I give you the thunder hammer for when you absolutely positively need to kill every last fucking person in the room, except no substitute. Uh oh, and the chain fist also. It's meant to crack open tanks. It's a chain sword powered by a power fist. Woohoo. Oh, it's, it's not a thunder hammer, that's for damn sure. All right. We are in the home stretch, ladies and germs, guys and ghouls. I am now going to be covering the heavy and specialist weapons. Stuff that could likely be mounted on a tank as well as carried by a space ring. Firstly, let's talk about the autocannon. 
usually affixed to the sides of dreadnoughts, the autocannon is mainly for destroying lightly armored vehicles. It's a gun that usually has two barrels for twin linking, and fires fuck you heavy ammunition. There are accounts in lore of dreadnoughts obliterating terminators with an autocannon. Best way to see it is high rate of fire with heavy shells. Next you have something similar but serving a different purpose. The aptly named Assault Cannon has many different rotating barrels that fire at an incredibly high velocity, but are a smaller caliber than that of the autocannon. Used in combat to deal with large groupings of lightly armored infantry, it can still cut down a decent swath of moderately armored to heavy armored individuals if given the right firing conditions. Okay, the next set of weapons isn't so much of a weapon as it is category of weapon. And that is a plethora of explosive launching devices. You've got missile launchers, rocket launchers, grenade launchers, Vengor launchers, Castellan launchers. There is a lot of them. They all do the same thing, which is deliver a long throbbing tube filled with explosive metal shit your pants to something very far away. Pretty useful, but there are a shitload of them to choose from. Now we get to something a little bit more esoteric, the conversion beamer. Also known as the sea beam projector, it fires a beam of energy that turns whatever is in its way into more energy. So basically, the further away the target is from you, the stronger the energy impulse beam thing is. I mean, it makes sense as I'm reading it, but like the science behind it is bananas. Okay, so on to some more specific stuff that's easier to understand. There is a lot of heavy versions to weapons we have already discussed. So there is the heavy bolter, which fires massive sized bolt shells and at speeds to kill anything in front of you. You have the plasma cannon, which is a plasma gun but bigger, grav cannon, which usually has an amplifier of some sort that increases the effect. Heavy Flamer, which has a shitload higher yield of Prometheum. Then you have the Multi Melta, which is, oddly enough, not a heavier version of a regular Melta. It just has a higher rate of fire, which I guess is a neat addition to the formula because the Melta gun was already an anti tank weapon, so what are you gonna do? Make it an anti Titan weapon? And last, but once again, certainly not least, the goddamn Laz Cannon, which. I love the Laz Cannon in principle. There is a weapon in this universe used by the standard guardsman. It is a Laz Gun. It fires a single laser beam that can damage most enemies. It's pretty weak in comparison to the Bolt Gun, which is the standard Space Marine weapon, but here comes the Laz Cannon, which is based off the mentality of what if Laz Gun, but 100 times bigger? So now, it fires a constant stream of high temperature laser, which is mostly used for long range anti-tanks send them to the deepest pits of Tartarus activities. And honestly, I love them for that. I love spamming Laz cannons. It's so stupid and fun to see people bring tanks and have them just evaporate into a fine powder. And that is more or less all of them. I know I skipped a few categories because they were all very, very similar. I could have covered the various different bolt guns, bolt carbines, and bolt shooty McBang Bangs, but the differences are so minute, it doesn't goddamn matter. I think the variance of each of these weapons is cool. I like them. I think they all do well to just serve different purposes on the battlefield as well as just look cool aesthetically. Space Marines have a tool for more or less every job under the sun, so my next question is, what's your favorite Space Marine weapon? As well as, did I miss any? I probably did from the modern era. I did leave out stuff that's used by the Chaos Space Marines because like, fuck that, I don't wanna talk about them. Reaper chain cannons are cool, but it's not a space marine weapon. Regardless, thanks again for watching. Remember to like and subscribe as it does help my channel grow. Alongside that, 
I want to thank my channel members for supporting me. I promise one day I will give you limited edition Castigator Bolt Carbine from Call Stash. And if you want to see all of my videos early, the second they're uploaded, rather than waiting for the standard date for them to go live, feel free to become a channel member yourself. And lastly, I want to say, for those of you who are going to bring up the Astartes Weber and how I didn't talk about it, die!